yes testing one two three okay hopefully everyone can still hear me um i've been short on the euro dollar for quite some time and the reason is obviously this okay we've been in major bear market and particularly when it comes to the aggressiveness of the moves to the downside you see the higher the swing highs rather are not being broken and the swing lows are constantly being tested and broken you see extending lower and lower therefore um you can see that we are in a pretty decent um downtrend you see that the moving average is also they just fanned out quite nicely on the daily time frame so the trend is uh, pretty strong however as i mentioned yesterday um this 111 zone here okay 111 to me it does look like an area where the market could hold up right so going into nfp we could see a potential market rally to the upside um i don't know probably to around 1286 right so 1286 would be very interesting for me okay that's about 120 pips in total okay and that would be the ideal situation market coming back to these um swing highs over here see previous consolidation area this is on the four hour and we do have a secondary area i think it's 112 yes 112 all right so 112 also does look interesting plus you can see that we do have the four hour moving average there as well so we could say a potential bounce on either one of these two areas now depending on what the market will be doing in terms of um, price action okay and uh, the reaction to those two levels um, we could see a downward um, drop at 112 or around 1285 okay it's all going to depend on obviously how the market reacts around that area yeah. so for me at this moment okay um coming into the week i was um a bit short on the euro dollar until i realized that um that one 111 area had already been tagged i think i've been talking about it for the past um couple of weeks that i was hoping that the market could take well probably two months or three months at least I've been talking about that 111 area being tagged and it actually did um i didn't have any orders on it so unfortunately i couldn't capitalize on uh, the move okay because i mean a buy stop somewhere around here just before that it's like 50 pips so it's nothing to write home about okay but 50 pips at the end of the day is 50 pips so yeah so that is my view on the euro dollar i'd like to see a bit of a rally to 112 or 1285 from their rejection and hopefully that's i'm going to be on the four hour time frame with just some sort of a pin to that moving average okay um i did talk about the pound okay the pound okay i did say in the group that there's i mean there's probably not a, not much left in the pound for the rest of this week and one of the reasons is you can see that the swing low 21 okay say 21 even all right all right um it's probably about i don't know 50 more pips left that 21 even level okay um on the long term scale i'm still short on the euro dollar as i'm with, with i mean on the pound dollar as i'm with, with most other pound currencies pound pairs so but for now um i'd like to see some sort of a rally to the upside okay for opportunities to extend the move to the lower side okay so if you're looking at the weekly time frame i'm seeing 21 even okay which is about 50 60 pips away and as you can see i mean the first two days of the week the market just parabolic to the downside and the move so far for this week was 260 pips um, i'm guessing the pound dollar has about a 300 pip um, weekly range at most okay 
think the average one would probably be around 250, 280 pips. But at most, I mean, looking at 300 pips, which I do believe now, the market will just pull back, consolidate um, into NFP. So, I mean, we could see potential movement um, there, but I think that the market, I mean, the, the, the pound has exhausted. That's what I do believe, the pound has exhausted. Um, I can say the energy or the amount of pips that we could expect it to actually move within a week, but I mean, anything can happen. So I'm eyeing 2100, okay, 2100, there, just below, um, for a bit of a pullback. Um, in terms of re-entry, I mean, I'd have to see some sort of a rally to the upside for me to be comfortable enough to think about a rally. So 2380, Okay, which is probably about 200 plus pips away from where the market is. Um, we did catch most of the move. Okay, we did catch most of the move here sometime last week. And target one was at the close of Friday, which was about 130 pips. And I think second target was about 180 pips. So that wasn't a bad one. I mean, we did miss most of this move to the downside. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're, ne you're never going to get out at the exact bottom and you're never going to get out at the exact top. You're not going to get in where the trend starts and get out where the trend ends. It's impossible. All you want to do is you want to catch sort of like the meat of the move. Okay, so even, even if it was a breakout below this point, because I do, I think I remember guys telling me that they caught the breakout below um, 2417. Okay, 2417, which is pretty good risk reward because the stop losses were just above that swing high there. And take profits, I think that was based on the Fibonacci, so I'm not quite certain of that. So, but yeah, at the moment, that's um, what I like to see on the on the pound dollar. Yeah. I like to see a bit of a rally to the upside for me to get involved in it again. Okay, let me just find this. Okay, love to see a bit of a rally to the upside, okay, which will probably have to be a really aggressive one to that um, 50, 60 percent Fibonacci retracement. I'd like, I really like to see that. And if that does happen and we get some sort of a moving average bounce, then I'll continue my short bias on the GBPUSD for now. Obviously, I wouldn't be chasing the shorts to the downside. I'd just be avoiding that one altogether. Um, okay, I've been looking at um, the USD JPY. Okay, the dollar yen. So, if we're looking at our weekly, um, we see a bit of a, I call it flag or triangle whatever those patterns are called. Uh, but basically it's the market making swing lows because I did um, mention this quite a while back and it was in relation to this sort of like contraction that the market was actually uh, making. And I was saying that the breakout will determine where the market is actually headed, right? So I think from there, What we should be looking at is hopefully getting some sort of a breakout on either one, okay, hopefully on the daily time frame at least. Okay, so a break to the lower side will obviously confirm my short bias because I at the moment I mean there's really not much to say where the trend is actually going. Right, so there's no solid trend directional bias on the higher time frames. So you're just looking at your short term trades, short term positions. You can trade either way. So um, I would think for me, structurally, a level that would make sense. Okay. Um, so structurally, a level that would make sense probably around 108.36. Okay. So 108.36, we do see market coming to these swing highs over here. 
right? I'd love to see the market just hit that swing high above 108.98. Okay, 108.98 and make a swing high before pulling back to the downside and tagging 108.36.5. Okay. So for me, technically, um, swing low to the swing high, boom. That's why I think 108.36 should be an area to actually watch. All right. So within the next few days, that is, for me, sort of like a hot zone. All right. Okay, so on the USDJPY, for me, yeah, that's basically it. Swing low, um, possibly to around 108.36 which is the previous week's high from um, two weeks ago. Okay, so that forms the structure. You have a swing low, swing high, Fibonacci retracement, 50, 62%. Um, I do believe there's one of the EMAs somewhere around here. Okay, so you might see a tag just below the moving average or a break below the, one of the moving averages, then a rally to the upside. And our US dollar CAD. I mean, US dollar CAD is. Okay. Um, we've had a break of the 200 moving average on the daily time frame. I think it was a month ago. Okay. The market broke below, boom. And I was expecting it to make a bit of a rally to the upside probably to around 32, 35, before the market actually continued to the downside. Right? Um, but as you can see, we see the market sort of like slowly sliding away from that swing high point, okay? Um, this is the area that I was looking at, 32, 35. And obviously from a retracement perspective, from that swing high through to the swing low, you have your 50, 62% Fibonacci retracement. Um, I think you have your daily moving average as well. So a lot of things were coming together around this area. Therefore, I thought at least I'd get some sort of a push or rally to the upside. Um, so for now, I'm sort of neutral on it. I would like to see at least a bounce off this structural area here, this 3140, I can say, 3140. This is where the market actually is right now. So 3140, I'd love, I wouldn't go out and buy on it, okay? But you can see you got a nice moving average bounce there as well. So it could mean that we are headed in the right direction. Okay. Guys are with me. Okay, hopefully everyone's clear on that. All right, so I'd love to see the market come first. 32, 35, and then sort of like make a continuation of the move to the downside. Okay, but obviously we'd have to wait for the setup to occur before we actually get into anything here. All right, um, the Euro Yen, right, Euro Yen, I won't lie to you, has been a bit of a tricky one to trade. Okay, so we've got these swing highs, and this swing high here, which is, I think it was last week's high, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was last week's high. Um, you had one of the moving average um, being tagged, I think it was probably the 800 moving average. And the market itself has been in uh, 
bearish tone okay has been in a downward trend and nothing much to say there um, we had this swing low okay you can see structurally we had this swing low at um, 2131 and the market came right into that particular area there um, i'd love to see a continuation of the move to the downside because i do trade trend right so i'd love to see the market continue on the, in the sort of like bearish tone um what would be sufficient for me obviously is a break above one of these key areas over here okay so let's just say 2136 2136 definitely would be something for me to take a look at and from a Fibonacci retracement perspective, okay, the market is right within that um, sort of like hot zone that we look for. Okay, so, all right, um, right. so definitely would love to see the market pull down a bit further. Hopefully, in line with the, the Euro USD in time. So, we might see a bit of a consolidation, some sideways movement, congestion, whatever you want to call it, before the market starts moving. All right. All right. Okay, so um, I think those are the ones that I basically had an eye on but right. um so anything else i can probably just send through to the group just to make sure that um we're all on the same page right so i'll just uh, i'll probably take screenshots of these and just send them through to the group um you guys can just add on to whatever ideas that you do have about the markets like i said this is just um my analysis okay very brief, right? Nothing in depth or confusing. And the only thing that I would like everyone to do is just to have their own sort of way of uh, then looking at the information and so like deciding the information and making sure that it is something that really makes sense for you, right? So if trade makes sense for you, then it's going to be much easier for you to hold on when it's not going your direction, okay? But if you don't have any conviction on the setup, then obviously as soon as you draw down about five, ten pips, then you're gonna to want to get out. Okay. But right, so everyone, hope you guys have a lovely day. And yeah, let's make it a good trading day, guys. Cheers.